Hello good people, I'm Dimitri. In this video, I went ahead and found really unique mice online and my mission today is to see if they're actually any good. The first one is the X-Lite Super Glide. So this is a mouse with tempered glass feet. Is that the next craze for mice? Maybe, you know, we've gone through this iteration with cases before, but tempered glass on a mouse. So this thing is a $79 mouse. It's a special edition, one out of 2000, so 1000 per white and black models. And it's the world's smoothest and fastest tempered glass mouse feet. The reason I am told this is such a limited edition run is because the yields for these tempered glass feet are super low. It is very difficult to manufacture. It is difficult to polish and also to get right in terms of the thickness, to not introduce any errors in the tracking information and when it comes to lift off distance too. So the thickness has to be just right. The mouse is 57 grams, so super lightweight with KL GM 8.0 80 million click switches, which are fantastic, with PAW 3370 20K DP, 1000 Hertz sensor. And right off the bat, this is the smoothest mouse experience glide I have ever experienced. To the point where they recommend you use a cloth mouse mat instead of the hard surface ones, the speed ones, to give you additional control because there's so little resistance when the mouse is on the mouse mat that you need to introduce a bit of resistance to give you control. So check this out. Even if your desk or the mouse mat are not properly flat, the mouse will just simply slide off it. It slides on anything, including rubberized underside of a mouse mat, which is kind of crazy. And this combined with a super light body and excellent ergonomics means it's a truly fantastic and a unique gaming experience. For example, check out me making circles at 800 DPI versus my control mouse that looks like tiny square boxes when I try to move the mouse as little as possible. So really awesome work from Pulsar. This is innovation in the mouse space that I didn't think I would want, but it is really cool. It is unfortunate that only 2000 are made because the yields are super low, but it's kind of like overclocking your glide and trust me, it is worth it. You know what else is worth it? The segment for our pre-roll. Let's roll. Ooh, I see you've been working on your core. When you core, you got a P6. The new Thermaltake Core P60 G enclosure is for those with core priorities on displaying your beautiful hardware in this wall mountable, fully modular frame and a transferable core to switch between closed and an open design. The interior, of course, is fully ready for your fans, radiators, built in vertical GPU mount with a support bracket, lots of IO options at the front, and is available in black or white snow editions. The Core P6 is built for makers, check it out below. All right, so this next input device is a very unique one, the Game Ball Mouse. I am genuinely excited to give this a spin. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. At $148, it's an ambidextrous mouse, so the trackball can be used by right and left-handed players. There's a PixArt sensor here with five sensitivities at 1000 Hz polling. We are promised precise fingertip control with ceramic bearings. And at 230 grams, this is a very heavy yet ergonomic leaning mouse made to be stationary and because there's no movement, less space is required to use this versus your traditional mouse. And after having used the MX Ergo, the Game Ball is a totally different beast, especially for gaming. So first of all, the trackball navigation is done with your middle and point fingers, while your thumb and ring fingers are in charge of left and right button presses, which is super unnatural. You basically gotta retrain your entire hand for movement navigation, and that is unfortunate part of it because the left click is this tiny button on the bottom instead of the larger button right uh, above it, which is your back button for some reason. So doing any type of tracking may be comfortable, but then when it comes to actually firing a weapon or doing, you know, ADS with the right click, which is on the opposite side, it is kind of awkward and that is the most unfortunate part of this mouse. Unfortunately, the button layout for me doesn't work. Also, they travel way too far, so anytime I press any of the buttons, I accidentally like move the trackball, so I cannot be precise with it. But the tracking is very good, however, so if you can get to the button presses and can get beyond the new retraining of your finger memory and your wrist stuff, then I think it's worth a try. What really surprised me is how pretty decent and accurate you can get with this thing after some practice. You know, it's not meant to be a mouse replacement, but for people with limited or restricted mobility, this is a fantastic alternative for games because the response of the trackball is very good. Even if you flick around, I feel like there's no loss of data despite the ball, you know, slightly bouncing around. With a strong flick, you can feel the ball bounce out of the socket, but those uh, ceramic bearings do a fantastic job making sure to capture 
all that circular information and give you that tracking data. I would say to get good, you need to anticipate where the enemy is coming from and pre-aim because you don't have that good of a speed as you do with regular mouse, but you can still get there and there's a bit of an issue in terms of like flicking and finding a target that way. It's not as fast again as with the regular mouse, but for games that have some less forgiving mechanics in terms of less accurate aim, you know, with Tarkov, get some rip ammo, get a laser sight and go to town, you know, <laughs> you can have fun. Also one element that surprised me was recoil control. So with the mouse, you have to pull it down. So it's the same mechanic with a trackball. And so once you get comfortable with aim, uh, it is easy to relearn. Lastly, the scrolling is done with these capacitive areas around the trackball for horizontal and vertical movement, which is right in reach and the only non-strange part of learning a new mouse. I would say for games, that don't require that much precise aim. Uh, it's a very good experience because the tracking is awesome. It's just unfortunate that the button layout for me totally sucks, but at least the tracking is good, right? Next up, we have a $59 mouse with a built-in fan right underneath your palm area. This is the Zephyr Pro, which is the second generation fan mouse, which is sweatproof. They've improved on the vibrations and noise of the fan while delivering a pretty impressive 69 gram body while also having RGB elements. As much as I was looking forward to saying this is gimmicky trash, the fan actually works and <laughs> I kind of love it. It blows a very light stream of air upwards towards your palm, thus cooling your entire hand and eliminating the sweaty palm area. You can slightly hear the fan noise, but it can also be turned off. And to top it off, the mouse shape is very similar to that of the Model O wireless or the standard Model O uh, or the Superlight with 50 million Omron primary switches, 3389 sensor at 1000 Hertz. Overall, it's not bad. And to my own surprise, I actually really like the feeling of the cooling slight air. You know, it's not like bombarding you with air, so it's not gonna get irritating, but a very slight stream of air that will cool your palm. And it's awesome for people who have really sweaty hands. So the perforations on that thing are properly spaced out to give you that nice little stream. Eventually though, when the cooling fan dies, you still have a pretty lightweight body at 69 grams with a fantastic shape and, you know, pretty good features. So, I mean, it's not as trashy as I thought it would be. Next up, we have this $39 air blader from Cougar, a tiny mouse with an interesting shape that has no perforations. Instead, the shell is not entirely solid in some sections to reduce the overall weight. At 62 grams, it's only slightly front heavy, but otherwise with great 50 million click switches, awesome sensor at 2000 Hertz polling rate, all right PTFE skates and a pretty chunky cable, which is the only drawback. There is no RGB bling as you can see, so you get this like G305 like shape that's a tiny bit smaller, uh, but still with awesome control. I didn't even need to adjust to the shape. It just worked. The scroll wheel is solid. The DPI button is a fin and the side clicks are well in reach with proper tactility. I would recommend this one. Check out the Cougar Air Blader. This next device is a wireless handheld trackball mouse for $18. Again, I was expecting to say this is absolute trash and you know, in brackets, it kind of is, but it still has some really unique elements. So first, this is meant to be for presentation purposes. So we have a button that fires off a laser. It's accessible, it's easy to reach and it's bright. Second, it's good for left and right hand users because the two buttons beside the scroll wheel are your right button. So regardless of which way you're holding it, plus we have the trigger, you know, for your point finger, which is your left click. Also, there's the enter button beside the laser. And tracking overall, I would say is passable, but with caveats, the trackball is very smooth, therefore giving you a little bit less control than I would like. Anytime you do the actual trigger click, my uh, tracking ball gets activated. So I always move it a little bit when I'm aligned to something and I have to remove my thumb from the trackball in order to activate the click exactly where I wanna be. Otherwise, the trackball will move my cursor. You can actually change the DPI, which I appreciate, and it's that the tiny button in front of the trigger, and it comes with batteries and a USB receiver, so you're ready to go. The ROG Spatha X Wireless is next at $149. The only reason it's in here is because it is large and heavy at 169 grams. We've gotten so obsessed with lightweight and small mice that anything else gets left by the sidelines, so this being an MMO slash RPG focused layout, 
I thought it deserved some attention. The six thumb buttons on the side look kind of weird, but surprisingly the layout works. You know where each of the six button lies, plus there are two more pointer finger buttons beside the left click that are you know relatively easy to reach despite being so forward. As usual with ROG mice, you can swap out the switches for something else, but the default ROG micro switches feel and sound awesome with 70 million click lifespan. I love the precise DPI adjustment using the scroll wheel instead of accessing the software. The charging dock slash your wireless receiver is very over the top, but with fast charging built in, so you get 12 hours of battery life in 15 minutes on the dock, with a total of 67 hours of runtime without RGB. The sensor is best in class, and I'm honestly impressed at how easy it is to start using the Spata X despite its weight. So I just wanted to include this uh, not so popular mouse in here because it is absolutely decent, especially for those who want something large, heavy, perhaps you play it, you know, a uh, high DPI and you like your control. Switching to something that I also thought would be decent because of rave reviews, here we have the Microsoft Arc mouse at $54. So this is a Bluetooth 4.1 device, lightweight at 83 grams. It runs off two AAA alkaline included batteries, promising a total of six months of battery life. It's not as terrible as I thought it would be because I absolutely hate Bluetooth accessories on Windows, but here it connected, everything works on both of my notebook, my desktop, no problem. So props to them for doing that. But how do you hold this thing? It's like mini torture. For your hand. I appreciate the arc nature of it, but I don't like when the little bulge underneath gets formed. There's always a delay when you're scrolling, and also in order to activate the right click, only one finger has to be on the plane and has to be clicked on the right side. Otherwise, if two fingers are on the plane, it will treat it like a left click. I love the materials, the cool color options, the simplicity behind the power off state when it's flat, but I'd rather use a trackball mouse than submitting to fashion tech. And that trackball mouse is this thing. It's an oldie, but still very unique. The Logitech MX Ergo for $89. So we have really interesting control with the thumb, no wrist movement necessary. So it's great for tight spots or those with limited mobility in the wrist or the arm or the elbow. The dual angle position also means the mouse is super comfortable to use. The metal base adds plenty of weight for stability. Plus the rubberized bottom locks the mouse body in position. And I'm pretty surprised at how quickly I got used to the trackball for you know, simple navigation. I love the precision button as well to really get accurate and slow cursor. I find it fantastic to, let's say, highlight text. Even when you flick around the monitor, there is no acceleration, so you can get really precise and accurate where you wanna be. Plus the rolling is fairly quiet. I love the smooth scrolling option and the dual source navigation if you use the MX Ergo with the receiver on one computer and with Bluetooth on the other. But also this is perhaps not for carpal tunnel people because the thumb does all the work. So and one thing, you avoid wrist movement and elbow movement and uh, shoulder movement, but all that work <laughs> goes to your thumb. And this is something that I immediately felt after a couple of hours of using this thing. My wrist felt better, sure, but my thumb, my thumb felt weird. Still, it's a very unique input device experience, especially for productivity. And <laughs> that's coming from someone who is so used to gaming mice. There is a cheaper trackball alternative, also from Logitech, the Ergo M575, which has 80% of the MX Ergo, but without the precision button and no 20 degree tilt option, which I find super comfortable. And lastly, another unique ergonomic option for $22 is this shape here, disguised under many brands in different regions. It's wireless with the vertical design, kind of like the handshake grip shape. Surprisingly, this thing is comfortable despite having this shark fin shape but you know, your hand sits in this comfortable position. There's no strain anywhere, but you still have to move it. So that's something to keep in mind. We're all used to having our palm flat. So imagine taking a cup of coffee and moving it on the desk. You know, that is awkward. But aside from having a comfy shape, it's quite basic with three DPI levels, a USB receiver compartment at the bottom. And what a frustrating way not to include batteries. Are you kidding me? I would say this for office use would be fantastic if you're tired of flat mice and you want something a bit more ergonomic and cheap and wireless. The only issue with tracking here is that it has a pretty high lift off distance, but you know, you're not gonna be gaming with this thing. So uh, it's definitely much better than some of the gaming mice I've tried in this price range. This is the first vertical mouse that I've used and I love the shape. You know, it's not particularly well built. I'm reading some sensor issues over time based on long-term reviews, 
but it sure is different. And the first vertical mouse of its kind that I've used and I find the shape awesome. So I would love to see more like it on the market. All right, so let me know which mouse stood out to you the most. I'm Dimitri, thanks very much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. I'll talk to you in the next video.